What's cracking, Josie Garfunkel? Let's learn some shit. In this video, we're going to go through the general settings of your new Nitrato server that we walked you through in the last video. So once you get your server, you're going to click on your profile name, you're going to click on My Services, it's going to bring you to this page right here. These are your servers, or at least the ones you have access to via admin guest rights. There's two ways you can access your interface. You can click the gears over here that say Web Interface, or you can click the down arrow here and click Web Interface. Let's hop over there and have a look. So now that we're over here on the dashboard of our Nitrato Daisy server, you're going to scroll down here a little ways, and over here on the left you're going to see General under the Settings section. Tap it. And over here are the general settings of your server. To start with, we're going to go over this real quick, the enable gameplay.json. If you have this box checked per using a JSON file from following our previous video on how to add a JSON to your Nitrato server, then a lot of these parameters don't necessarily pertain to you as those settings will be done in the gameplay and we've already covered those in our past videos. So we're going to start up here at the top. Right away we got the missions. This is your map. For a console, we have Tenaris and Livonia. This is my Xbox server, so this is the example I have to show you. PC may have some other options. Your host name is going to be what your server name is. What you would search in the search bar when people are trying to find your server, or if you want to be on the front page or the first couple of pages, a little start of header trick and some math will get you bumped up on the page list. If you desire to run a password, you can put in a password here and save your server and it will implement the password. If you do not desire a password, simply leave this blank. Server time multiplier is the daytime multiplier and server time multiplier night is of course the nighttime multiplier. These are the increments that you're going to put into your Nitrato server and save to determine how long your days and nights are. If you hop over to our partnered server, the BatBot support server, our partner Batman has made a feature where you can put a command with your desired daytime hours and desired nighttime. You may also use decimals as seen in the command above and it will spit out what you need to put on your Nitrato server as seen here in the embed. Next we have use system time, custom server time, and persistent server time. Let's go over these for a moment. If you're using the system time, this means that the server starts with the local time of the machine. Meaning whatever region you rented your server from, that's where the machines are kept for those servers that are being rented. So it's going to be relative to your region. This means every time the server restarts, it's just picking up wherever the machine's time is. If you don't want to use that, you would uncheck that and implement a custom server time for your server time to start. This is especially good if you would like to start in the middle of a specific season. You can set the date via the year, month, and day, and then the time of that day. Persistent server time, if you have this box checked, means it keeps track of the time on your server. So if your server restarts in-game at 2 p.m. server time, then when the server comes back online from its restart, it's picking up where it left off. If you would like to restart at the fresh custom server time every time, you can uncheck the box and just have a repeat loop to keep it the same kind of day if you have a specific temperature you desired or have that configured in the gameplay. Deactivate third person pretty straightforward toggles the third person view for players deactivate crosshair that's going to toggle whether or not your players have the dot in their screen or whatever crosshair they've selected through the custom options reduce log output this can help your server's performance it tells you but it's also sacrificing some logs that you might need to know about reset mission xml to default 
What this does is when the server restarts, it resets all the files back to the current vanilla files. In this case, it would reset your servers to 1.19 if you check the box, click save, and restart the server. If you ever get an error and are unsure how to fix your files, come over to the G code, we can help you sort that out. But if you're fed up and just don't want to mess with it and don't care about losing your progress, you could simply reset it, get your vanilla files up and running again. The log damage option is going to be whether you want to log only damage done, PvP, player versus player, or you deselect it, as seen here, to also log animals and infected. For log placements, this is going to tell you who placed what where. This is going to be especially handy for role play or heavy rules servers. Log base building, if you want to see where your players are building, dismantling, who base raided, who destroyed my gate, that's where you're going to want that box checked. The log player list is going to log all players coordinates every five minutes. So if you need to track a player or find where you are or help find a friend and you're just having some fun, this is the option you're going to want to check so you can keep up with everything. The night lighting, this is going to make your nights darker. It's going to make night vision more functional. It's going to have you more reason to start torches and flashlights, the head torches, etc. Risk, reward. It's fun for role play. The personal light. This is whether or not your players have that little glow or light aura around their character when they get close to objects. So if it is darker nights, you could leave this checked to disable it and make it completely dark. Or you could uncheck it so you keep that little bit of a glow. Up next we have the ban list. This is where you're going to put the gamer tags of the people you want to keep off your server. The troublemaker, the multiple alt accounts, the trolls, toxic players, whatever your situation. Mouse and keyboard, self-explanatory. This is where you're going to toggle whether or not you allow mouse and keyboard to be accessed for your console server. The whitelist is whether or not to activate a whitelist. With a whitelist, you don't need to worry necessarily about a ban list or a password. You're simply saying these are the people that I authorize to be on my server. And prioritize players means if your server is full and you have a queue, the prioritized players move to the front of the line. This is good for some priority VIPs. Maybe you have some streamers that play your server and you want to give them quicker access. This is the list where you're going to want to put those friends' names. Moving to the very bottom now. Disable base damage. Pretty self-explanatory from here. This is going to disable the base damage, making it where your stuff cannot be destructed. For RP or raid weekend style rules, this is the box you're going to want to check. Same with below, disable container damage for your sea chest, your barrels, so forth. Disable respawn dialogue. Spawn with a random character or the character from the main menu. When you die, commit suicide, get killed by a zombie, fall, etc. Sometimes you have the option to respawn custom or respawn random. This is whether or not it allows you to save your character or play it as it lies and have to get a fresh character that you do not get to choose. And this will either allow or not allow that menu to have that option. And as we explained at the beginning, the enable gameplay.json box. This is going to toggle whether or not you're allowed to use JSON builds to customize your server. And that file is also going to determine whether or not lighting and a few other things, base damage as well. Those settings are controlled in the gameplay. So again, see one of my previous videos on the gameplay settings for your Nitrado server. Make sure after you're done setting all your settings, and setting your whitelists and the times and how you want it to run and the name of the server always make sure to save your changes and of course none of it goes into play until a server gets a nice restart to do that confirm and you're set to get started as soon as that pops up search your server it's time to have an adventure that's it for this one. In the next one, we'll start customizing a few XML files 
and get you setting up your server better. Hope y'all learned some shit. I'm out.